Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the extra mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now your hosts, Jackson Mummy and Megan Saya from Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 316 of the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. I'm Jackson Mummy. I'll be joined by Megan Saya in just a few minutes to talk about an absolutely insane week in the bar exam. The, the iceberg started to crack. That's what happened. And so I chose what I thought was a fitting backdrop for today's uh, podcast episode. If you're watching on video, uh, a chilly iceberg and uh, beginning to crack. We uh, finally saw movement and big movement uh, in California and New York this week. We're going to break all of that down for you, give you our insight and analysis in just a minute. Now, of course, we're also just a few days away from the July 28th and 29th, 2020 bar exam. And historically, that would have been a huge test with thousands of people, tens of thousands of people attending, typically about 45,000 bar takers for that exam. It looks like those numbers are going to be just a tiny fraction of that in July, as more and more states have moved their exams back into September uh, 9th or September 30th, or now October 5th and 6th, or if you're in Florida, August 19th. So there's a lot of different permutations and a lot of information. If you want a quick update on everything that's happening in every jurisdiction, you can go to celebrationbarreview.com, click on the menu item, it's now titled Fall 2020 Exam Update, and you will see every state listed along with their current status and links to their orders and press releases. So I encourage you to check out that information. I also wanna just say, belatedly, I guess, if this is your first time on the podcast, welcome, we're glad you're here with us. There's a lot going on, obviously, and we're trying to keep you up to date on everything that's bar exam related. We provide these podcasts in both a video and audio format. If you prefer to watch today's episode, you can go to celebrationbarreview.com slash 316. That's the episode number. And if you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can do that on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, on radio.com, Spotify, just about any place the podcasts are syndicated and check it out from there. There are a couple of brief uh, things I want to tell you about before we jump into the, uh, the details about everything that happened this week. The first thing I wanted to let you know is that in the midst of all of this uh, craziness around the bar exam, we've been providing a free training webinar titled, Now is the Best Time to Take the Bar Exam, Why You Should Ignore the Crowds and the Fear. And it's been very well received. We've had over a thousand people go through the uh, training and uh, gotten, uh, I think, nearly a five-star rating. So I really would encourage you to join us. It's completely free. It's a 60-minute training. And you can register right here in the show notes uh, for either the video or the audio version of the podcast or by going to celebrationbarreview.com slash now. In that free training webinar, what we're going to be doing is updating you on our strategy for dealing with all of the changes in 2020 and now into 2021. In addition to that, I'll do a live Q&A at the end of each training session to just answer any specific questions that you've got about your circumstances or about what's going on or about the particular strategy that we're offering. And as I say, it's been extremely well received and I encourage you to join us. There's no cost. Uh, we're offering this a couple of times a week. And so to check out the upcoming schedule, just click on the button here in the show notes or go to celebrationbarview.com slash now. Hope we'll see you on that training. And then finally, I want to let you know about a new product that we introduced a couple of weeks ago that's gotten a great response. This product is called the MBE Nutshell Videos. And essentially, this is a series of condensed high-speed videos designed to take you through the essential rules and principles of each of the multi-state bar exam subjects in under 25 minutes. It is an amazing piece of technology. It lets you read the text on the screen. You'll hear it uh, in a voice uh, recording and the voice recording moves quickly in sync with the video. And it's a great uh, tool to just replay in the background, run it as much as you want and to get a full coverage of the testable rules and testable principles in all seven MBE subjects. Each subject takes about 25 minutes uh, to complete. Now, we've priced the entire set of videos for $247. You can find a link in the show notes to check that out. 
But if you only want a single subject for some reason, you can buy a single subject for $47. So when you buy the full set, you're gonna save about $80. And uh, again, the feedback from the people that have been using it these last couple of weeks has been tremendous. Hope you'll check that out. We're really excited about this new product and it's open to anyone. Uh, you don't have to be a Celebration Bar Review student to use this particular product. So we encourage you to, to find out more about that. Again, the link is in the show notes. All right, well, I don't wanna keep you waiting any longer. Let's jump into this strange week in which the, the ice began to, to crack just a little bit and we've got some glimmer of what it's going to look like in fall of 2020 in major states around the country. So Megan, not much happened this week, did it? Oh goodness, it was a, it was a big one. All right, so we're gonna go through all the different state changes. We've got some major ones this week. I'm not unexpected for the most part, but uh, yet here we are. All right, so California, we finally got actual confirmation about what's happening there. And it was not a surprise. Um, if you've been listening to me for a while, then this is exactly what I anticipated, which is California is doing the online October 5th and 6th exam. So they will not be having their in-person September exam. It's going to be fully online October 5th and 6th. They uh, have extended registration. It's now open until July 24th. So if you were waiting to find out what California was doing before you decided on taking this exam or the February exam, you do have the ability to register right now. We, they've been unclear about what's going to happen with people who are handwriting and people who need accommodations. So definitely, if that's you, please contact them immediately to find out what you need to do, what needs to happen for you to be able to take the October 5th and 6th exam if you uh, need accommodations or are unable to take it on a computer. They did relax their requirements for internet. So they said that you don't need what well, they're calling constant internet. So presumably the internet, I don't know. Well, how it worked with the baby bar was you had a limited window to get back on. So if your internet kicked you off, you could, you had, I can't remember if it was three minutes. It was something like that. It was like five minutes maybe, but you had, did have a couple minutes to get back online again uh, without being um, kicked out of the test as a whole. And so we're assuming that also they have said that if you are physically in the state of California, you and you would like a quiet space to take the exam, um, you should contact law schools that are local to you. Um, certainly your alma mater if you live near where you went to law school, but um, even if not, I would try at least like contact a local law school and see if they will give you a room to take the exam in. They suggested that. So Definitely, it sounds like California is trying to acknowledge the issues that people had with the baby bar online examination. They're trying to remedy some of those uh, problems that people had, which was probably having a, a safe, secure, quiet place to take it. Um, and then also internet connectivity issues that were brief, but still a bit disruptive. And then the other huge news that was a bit more unexpected out of California, but is really, really good news, is that they have permanently lowered the passing score from 1440 to 1390. So this is not just for the online exam. This is not just during coronavirus. This is going forward, which is really wonderful news. Yeah, I want to talk about the scoring a little bit. First of all, for those that aren't familiar with California scoring, here's what you do. You take the California <laughs> number, you divide by 10, and then you multiply times two. So 1440 divided by 10 is 144 times two is 288. That's how you can compare it to New York or Florida or any place that's on a 400 point scale. So California had the highest, or I think Delaware might've had a slightly higher, who knows why, uh, bar score uh, passing rate, passing score in the country at 288. By comparison, New York was 266, so 22 point difference. Now with this new change going to 1390, divide by 10, multiply by two, you get to 278. That's a 10 point scale difference and that's huge. No other state has dropped their score by anything near that. Oregon and Washington both dropped by six points if I recall, but a 10 point drop is massive and it now begins to put California in the realm of a reasonable jurisdiction. Now, I'm not quite sure that I would say to someone who's thinking about where should I take the bar exam <laughs> to rush to California to get that 278. <laughs> but if you were stuck in California and you didn't have other alternative, if you couldn't jump out and do the UBE somewhere else, 
or anywhere else, or take any exam outside of California, 278 gives you a much better chance than you would have had before. So I really like that move. That's a, a real positive piece. Now, the, the, that long term, that will have huge implications, as you said, Megan. In the short run for October 5th and 6th, it's not, when I look at my magic eight ball, you know, it comes up and says, unclear, you know, ask again. Because we're not entirely sure yet with any of the jurisdictions in this October 5th and 6th window, how they intend to score their exams. They will all be different. I think if, well, all the states that are doing state parts of their exam will be different. And the states doing the plan B in its entirety from the national conference would be the same exam, but could score them differently. So what that means in California is that we anticipate, though I don't think we know yet, we anticipate five one-hour essays, one 90-minute performance test, and then the 100 multi-state questions developed by the national conference of bar examiners. That's the essence of the test. Now, we don't know what day, what segment goes where, but that's the essence of it. So how do the examiners get to that new 1390 or what I call 278? Well, I think what they're going to do is that they will scale the essays as they have before. That is, they will compare them to the mean and they will give them a score, uh, a raw score, and then convert it to a scaled score. The question is, what do you do with the multiple choice? When you don't have 200 questions, now it has to be point for point. So how many ever raw questions you've got correct is I think gonna be your score. I don't think you're gonna get a scaling bump the way you would have on a 200 question MBE. That means scoring is a wild card today. Now, remember, we're, we're talking mid-July here. By the time we get into August, I would hope we'll know more. And certainly, as we get further and closer to the exam date, we've now got until October 5th. So we're, I don't know, 75, 80 days away. It's still quite a ways away, which is a little weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, I know there are going to be a lot of questions about, well, what score should I get? Or what do I have to, we don't know. We, we won't know until the examiners in each state tell us how they plan to score this exam on October 5th and 6th. I also want to be clear, if you're taking the bar exam on July 28th or September 9th or September 30th, this that's not the problem. That's a regular bar exam. I mean, that's a full length, full on 200 question MBE plus whatever parts of the exam have always been there. And nothing changes as far as your scoring goes. We're only talking for those jurisdictions that are switching to October 5th and 6th. And I think we're going to see, in fact, we started to see it already in the last 24 hours, more states switching to this October uh, test. So it is an open question. Hold your fire for a little while and keep studying. And, and I think you would want to emphasize this too. All the same material is testable. Yes. Yeah. The only thing that's different is, it, is it's a hundred fewer multiple choice questions, but they, it's not like they took out a subject or two. They, it's all, it'll just have fewer questions in each subject, but all subjects will be testable, will be seen on the, right. the exam. So yes. Right. Study okay. same. Yeah. And the hundred questions are multi-state questions. They're mm -hmm. written by the NCBE. Now I want to compare that or contrast that to Florida. Yes. Florida is going to give 100 multiple choice questions not written by the NCBE, which means that they're probably Florida based. So if you're a Florida bar taker, don't get confused by this. <laughs> None of this applies to you. You can go pick daisies in the lawn for a few minutes because this is not about you at all. Uh, today is California and New York Day. And, mm -hmm. and so in that circumstance, you need to be ready for multi-state and essays and performance tests if you're a California bar taker for October 5th and 6th. And if you hadn't registered and you were thinking of sitting out, I think you should sit in. I think you should jump into this test rather than waiting for 2021. What's your view on that? Yeah, definitely. And the score is lower. They've given diploma privilege to like a lot of places lot to of people. Yeah. the people who are the recent graduates who haven't you know, taken the bar yet and failed or failed the bar. Um, so certainly there's a good chance that a lot of people are going to sit out. I just don't think... I. I Everyone we talked to from the baby bar had the online baby bar had a really positive experience with it. I just don't think that there's a lot of downside to taking it. Use registration still open. You can do it. it there's really, I just, I don't see a huge downside to be honest. I don't with either. I don't either. A lot of people are, are bailing out. We've been talking about this in our now is the best time to take the bar exam webinar for a few months. We anticipated this. 
by the way, none of this is a surprise to you and me. The score change is a pleasant surprise, but yeah. other than that, but we expected pretty much everything that's happened here. And because the people who blow up the curve, the Megan Sayers in the room, you know, yeah. are taking the exam, it, it means more opportunity and fewer applicants. I mean, at one point they were talking about what, 9,300 applicants in California. That isn't gonna happen. Not on this October 5th and 6th test. Yeah, and I feel too like you've got extra time to study now because now we're not only yeah. was it pushed back to September, now it's been pushed back to October. The window for studying between that October test and the February is gonna be very small because we've talked about this a bit. They have not announced yet when the results would come out, but with the September test, they were promising the results would be out be right before the end of the year. So now with October, I just don't see how they could get them out. I mean, potentially, but I think it would be very difficult to get them out before the end of the year. So you're looking at January and then turning around to February. So really, basically, if you are studying, you have so much time right now to study versus if you were to wait and say, oh, I don't really want to take that one. I'll just study later. It's going to feel really easy to keep pushing, like kicking that can down the road. And I would say just study now, get the studying in now and take the exam in October. You have plenty of time, so much time. So take yeah. advantage of that. Yeah. And if you're, if, if for the people who are going to be listening to this later in the podcast, if you haven't registered for a course, uh, you have enough time. You can register and be prepared for that exam date. Oh, there is yeah. to do this. So, and we've got people signing up every day. I know some of you are on the podcast or on the webinar today. So definitely it would encourage people to do this. If you were, if you had pushed out to February of 2021 in California, consider pushing back in mm -hmm. uh, now that we're in this October 5th and 6th. I think that's our generalized advice. Yeah. I agree. And when to just ask, what about if I'm taking the California attorney's exam? Well, as far as we know, it'll be one of those two days, probably. Well, it depends on what day the NCB wants to give their hundred question multiple choice. If they give that on Wednesday, the fifth, then your test will be on the sixth. If they give it on Wednesday, the sixth, your test will be on uh, Thursday, the sixth, your test will be on Wednesday. The yeah, but there's also a good question because um, they probably, because it's only a hundred multiple choice questions, it's not going to be true. a full day. So you probably will have it's to true, do, yeah. just won't do the afternoon or the morning. Yeah, or yeah that's true. That Yeah, good question. Yeah. Stay tuned. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I would block off both days, the fifth and the sixth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. I think you're right. You would probably need to take it on both days. Yeah, they'll most likely have to stretch it out. And then oh, here's another part to this. Just I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> I know you love it when I do this. Uh, <laughs> she says gritting her teeth. Is it better if you're an attorney applicant, should you go ahead and take the 100 multiple choice instead of sitting out that part? So that's an interesting question. I have to noodle on that. I really don't yeah. know. Normally I would say, no, don't sit for the MBE if you don't have to. <laughs> on the other hand, I don't know, 100 questions, maybe it's not so onerous. Maybe you should go for it. I, I don't know. Let, let, we'll think about that. Um, <laughs> but before the questions start coming, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea. I mean, do you have do you have a strong feeling about that right off the top? No. No, it didn't even occur to me. So no, I'm not. Mm. I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to say anything now without thinking okay. it through. Kind of what okay. the implications are of that. But Fair yeah, enough. it's a good question. All right. Okay, so that's California, and now we're going to move across the coast to New York. So they have canceled their September in-person exam. They, okay, so as of right now, there's no bar exam happening in New York in 2020. Like, as of right now, that doesn't mean permanently, but as of this moment, you cannot take a bar exam in New York for the rest of 2020. They have a temporary authorization program that's pretty extensive, but it's still first time bar takers employed in New York. So if you've ever failed the bar some anywhere, New York or anywhere else, it's not you're not eligible for it. But they did put together a working group to determine whether or not they should do the online exam. So they should know about that, they said, by early August. So keep your eyes open. That could open up New York to a lot of people, including a lot of our students who were locked out of New York for this yeah. examination round, there is a possibility that especially if I'm thinking, especially for people who I know have taken New York and failed New York, and then this time around have been unable to take the New York bar and have gone to other jurisdictions that have then shut down or said, oh, we're just doing a state specific one or things like that. Keep your eyes on this because this may be sort of a saving grace for you um, that you may be able to take 
bought the New York bar exam for October 5th and 6th to get admitted in New York. So this might be a, a good solution for you. Yeah. I, look, it's, it is discouraging when they say there's no bar exam. And it is frightening because then you think to yourself, well, the six or 7,000 typical bar takers in July would roll over. I mean, many of those people would be diploma privileged, but they would roll over into February of 2021 when candidly, it's hard to imagine sitting here in July of 2020 that COVID is going to be gone by February of 2021. I hope so, but I don't think so. And so if you add 7,000 bar takers that didn't get any chance at an exam in 2020, in addition to the four or 5,000 that typically sit in February, you have a massive logistical nightmare. If that's obvious to us, it must be a blaring, you know, flashing red light to the New York bar examiners and to the New York judiciary. And I don't think they want that circumstance. I think they'd, they'd like to do whatever they can do to avoid that happening. So they tried this idea of tiered applications for an in-person exam. It became obvious you couldn't do an in-person exam. So then I think that they are simply trying to give themselves a little bit of breathing room to see if they can legitimately go online. Now, when states like California and Florida go online, I think that's encouraging to New York. It should give them some pathway that they can follow to get a big state online for an exam because Really, those are the three states with the biggest bar number of bar takers. And if Florida and California can figure out how to do it, I think New York can as well. So if I'm if I'm betting right now, I'm betting on an October 5th and 6th New York online exam. And I'm betting that once they do that, they're going to open it wide open and say to, to anyone, here's an open registration, come in, take the exam. Now, it won't be a UBE. I, I we cannot say this often enough. It will not be a portable score. If you want to take the UBE in Alabama coming up, we're going to talk about Alabama in a minute, I guess, but or New Mexico or Colorado and transfer your UBE score to New York, you can still do that and become a member of the New York Bar that way. But if they give an exam on October 5th and 6th, it will be a one-off score. On the other hand, there's this thing called reciprocity, which is, for those of us who are old enough, we remember reciprocity. Your generation doesn't know anything about it, I, I know. And it's different than score portability. And reciprocity means whatever it takes, and if I'm a member of the bar in this state, then I can wave into your state without another exam. And that's different than score portability. So there could be reciprocity between New Jersey and New York, or Tennessee and New York. I mean, there's all sorts of permutations here. We're going to talk about some of those in a minute for the states that are giving the exam in October. But the point I really want to make, the takeaway here, is if you had planned to take the New York bar exam in 2020 or in early 2021, you should be studying right now as though you will sit for an exam on October 5th and 6th. You absolutely should be doing that. The worst case scenario is that you pout and you get angry, rightfully so, and you say, I'm not, well, they don't want me in. I'm not going to take it. I'm just going to wait. And then voila, shazam, somewhere in August, they say, we're going to give this test. And you're caught flat-footed. You haven't been doing the study. And you think you're upset now. You're going to be really upset when that happens. So I'm just, I, I don't know how else to say it to folks. You've got to keep studying. You cannot be distracted by all this stuff that's going on. You want to add to that? No, I think that's, okay. that's the point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. All right. So now we've got some more state changes. Um, this will impact fewer people, but still important, and especially if it's your state. All right. Alabama, they added September 30th through October 1st exam for anybody who's already registered for the July 2020 exam. So you have the option um, before the 21st, you will you can pick which exam you would like to take. If you don't pick, you're just automatically going to be put into the July exam. So they're doing this to try to space out the number of people who they have to accommodate. They also gave us some criteria for what's going to happen in the exam room, which is I just always like to share these because I think they're really helpful to see like what you should be preparing for, yeah. what kind of is happening. So Alabama, this is the first we've seen of this. Alabama face masks are optional during the timed portions. 
So I know I would say though, if you're in Georgia, keep that in mind too. I know the governor there has been fighting face masks. So there may be some of these Southern states where you're going to see that they're optional for pieces of it. Obviously we highly recommend you wear face masks. So, and be practicing in face masks, but face masks will be optional just during the time portion. So you will have to wear them during all of the, when you get there, when you're checking in, all that kind of stuff, when the proctors are giving the instructions, when they're checking your IDs, everything like that. So bring face masks, even if you don't want to wear one during the exam. You can bring your own hand sanitizer with you. You can also bring an analog watch, which we highly recommend because they said because of the spacing, they won't be able to make a clock that's seen by everyone. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. I thought it was really good of them to realize that problem. I anticipate this being a problem in a lot of places. Check and make sure if they give you the option of bringing an analog watch, bring it because there's really no guarantee that you will be able to see a clock at the front of the room because they may have people spread out too much in different rooms and things where they don't have clocks. So Yeah, and let's just be clear. <laughs> this is not an analog watch folks. <laughs> it is yeah. not an analog well, watch. You can't even have, it can't even be digital. I'm not even talking about smart watches, just yeah. like, you know, my son has a little Pokemon watch that just has the, the numbers written on it. Can't have that. has to have two hands um, and a clock face. So I think there's a Mickey Mouse watch that does that, but anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, so one other interesting point about Alabama, and, and this has come up with a couple of jurisdictions about so you're registered for the July exam. Now suddenly you're getting this option for a September 30th test. Should you take the September 30th test instead? I have a couple of general thoughts. Maybe you've got some something to add to this. I think first of all, it depends on health and what you what you feel is the healthiest alternative for you. That should be the number one consideration. Mm -hmm. The second consideration is, do you feel ready to take the test on July 28th? Now most bar takers always sort of feel like, oh, I'm not sure. Would it actually make a difference for you? It's a fairly significant 60 days, basically, to keep studying. And uh, we said this in our webinar before, that those 60 days could be very helpful to you to improve skills, to practice, to review. So I don't think there's a downside to that. On the other hand, we're also not clear how they intend to score the exams. That is, will they combine all of the bar takers in July with all the bar takers in September to put together one big pool? or will they score each exam independently? I think there will be relatively few people taking the exam next week, okay, or 10 days from now. If that's true, and if they scored that independently, in other words, if they said out of this cohort, X number of people are gonna pass, well, I'd like to be in that group because a whole lot of people are gonna get through. I mean, I just think that's, that's your best strategic chance of passing. I think most people will opt for the later date, both for health and for just general more study time. But if you feel like you are ready to go to the exam and you feel like you can deal with the, the health questions, I personally think you've got a better chance of passing the bar taking it in July because so few people are. And across the country, a whole lot of jurisdictions are bailing out of this July exam. I mean, every day we're getting more of them that are, that are dropping. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I would just add to that too, that we, there's no guarantee that when we get to September 30th, that the exam will happen. And I mean, we've been beating this drum since the beginning saying, hey, these jurisdictions are saying we're giving the July exam. There's no guarantee that that's actually going to happen. And now we're seeing they're dropping like flies. There's probably a better chance that Alabama will give the July exam considering it's just a couple weeks away. So yes, if you feel ready and you feel like I want to take it, I think you have a better chance that you're actually going to have an exam to sit for in a couple weeks versus we just have no clue what the situation in Alabama or anywhere else is going to look like in September. So yeah, you might get pushed into 2021. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a risk that you take. So you should be prepared for that. And yeah. you know, when people call us and, and write us and text us and say, what should I do? We can't tell you what to do, but I, I think you have to decide on that. And I hope that's helpful criteria. Yeah. All right. Virginia added a one day Virginia only bar exam on September 10th. So they are already doing the July exam. That will be the general regular bar exam. But then they have this one day Virginia only if you just need to be admitted to Virginia. Um, it's going to have nine Virginia essays and 10 multiple choice questions. So weird. That's not an error. I didn't say it wrong. 10 multiple choice questions. It will not be a UBE score, obviously. Um, and they gave, they 
said a raw 64 out of 100 is will be considered passing. You can pick the July or the September exam for Virginia. So now, I, I know I know you're a proud UVA law grad, but there's no <laughs> explanation for this at all. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's odd. I don't really understand 10 multiple choice questions. It's kind of like maybe just zero would be fine at that point, but sure. Okay. At least it won't take you very long. 10 multiple choice questions will really, that's pretty quick. 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. 15 minutes and you're out of there. Okay, Tennessee canceled their September 30th through October 1st exam and moved to a remote October 5th through 6th test. They have announced reciprocity with Maryland, D.C., and Massachusetts. So if you are in Tennessee, there's been a lot of movement there, I know, but that's where they have ended up now. Uh, New that's Jersey, an example, of, isn't it, of, of people being shuffled from July to September and yes, now being shuffled into the online test. Yes. And again, as more states come into the plan B, you won't get reciprocity, I don't think, between Tennessee and California on October 5th and 6th because California is no. not doing plan B. Right. But the plan B states, there is some reciprocity. Some the only them, plan yes. B state that seems totally out of the loop right now is Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So you definitely have to check with the reciprocity. It's not across the board. So they, this, each individual state has to work it out. So there's different permutations. Different states have reciprocity with different numbers of other ones. So yeah, double check with all that for sure. New Jersey canceled their September 9th through 10th exam and they moved to a remote exam on October 5th through 6th. They have reciprocity just with Massachusetts. So that's one where Massachusetts has reciprocity with several different states who are doing this test. New Jersey thus far just reciprocity with Mass. So keep that in mind, but that's good news for New Jersey to take it online. Yeah, and I know, I know we had some people that were trying to do New Jersey on September 9th and then a plan B jurisdiction on October 5th. That now is obliterated. That plan mm -hmm. doesn't work. You should try and get your money back. Pick the state you want. Again, a reminder, New Jersey in October is not the UBE. It's the right. NB and it's New Jersey only. So mm -hmm. if you were using New Jersey for the UBE, that's not going to work until 2021. Yes. And that's where I'm saying for people who were trying to get into New York and couldn't. And so then they did things like, okay, I'll take the UBE in New Jersey. And then they got bumped out of New Jersey because New Jersey is not giving the UBE. If New York does go to an October 5th and 6th, that will be really helpful for you because you could just go back to the initial jurisdiction that you wanted. And your studies are exactly the same. Yes, yes. Nothing changes. <laughs> the subject matter doesn't change. You don't need a new course unless you're taking, you know, somebody else's course and you want to come to us. But you don't need a new celebration bar in your course. You'll be, you'll be fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Then um, Vermont canceled September 9th through 10th exam and they went online to October 5th and 6th. So that's another one. Like we said, it's like the dam broke, which I know we've talked about that before that we anticipated as soon as California went with uh, October 5th and 6th, which we thought would happen. We figured there would probably be kind of a flood and there is a flood. And that Vermont change was just a few minutes ago. Yes. Uh, I, yes. <laughs> and since and since we've learned the pattern is Friday afternoons are when states seem to announce these things, it would not surprise me if by Monday morning we see more states in yeah. that scenario. Definitely. It's happening quickly. The D.C. announced they've entered reciprocity with Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Tennessee. So the reciprocity is also changing very rapidly with some of these as new states come into the October 5th and 6th exams. Sometimes they've already established reciprocity before they make the announcement. Others have added later. So, and then certainly once they're in, as different as different states add it, they will work out their own reciprocity agreements. So definitely, if that matters to you, if it's an important piece of the puzzle for you, you've got to be on it with all the states because it's just changing constantly. Yeah, let, let me tell you the states that won't give reciprocity. You won't see it in California. Right. You won't see it in Florida. Mm -hmm. You won't see it in Texas. Correct. Okay. Yeah. You might get it in Georgia. You might get it in New York, maybe. But at this moment, no. Yeah. Nowhere else. And Anur just asks, does it depend on the score? How does it? How does reciprocity work? No, it doesn't depend on the score at all. It's not score portability. It's a good yeah. question. If you're a mem if you pass the bar and you become a member of bar in state one, and they've got reciprocity with state two, you become a member of the bar in state two by just waving in and paying a fee. This is the way it used to be done long before the. This is why the multi-state bar exam came along is because every state gave their own test and they all had reciprocity, or some of them did, and some states stayed out. 
So we're really going back to the way it was in the 1960s in, in this regard. It's a very different world. So forget about score portability for right now. If you're, if you're in that October 5th and 6th date, look at the jurisdiction you're taking, look at who they've got reciprocity with, and that's, that's your universe right there. Right. Definitely. And the nice thing about that is that it really just lets it, it, it's why the reciprocity is so specific to state by state, because it's, for instance, New Jersey saying, OK, we trust Massachusetts. We've maybe they've got a relationship there and they're like, we trust the way they're going to score. But maybe like we don't really know Maryland that well and we don't really know how they're going to score the exam. So we're going to not establish reciprocity with them. So it's really more of a, hey, I trust you. If you say this guy's cool, then he's cool and he can be a member of our bar. That's yeah, it. which makes me wonder what's going on in Arizona that they're, right. either they're freezing everybody out or everybody else is freezing yeah. them out. That's a story I, I would <laughs> sure figure out, but inquiring minds would love to know. Yes. And Marva put it said, if New York goes online, I suspect it won't be restricted or prioritized as September had been. That's correct. We have not. There's no reason when an exam's online, anyone could take it who's eligible. So there's no reason to believe that there will be any prioritization. That's the point And the beauty of doing it online is that anyone there's no uh, yeah. health concerns. So anybody who's yeah. who's otherwise applicable or I mean, yeah, and if you're in a foreign country and you can't get into the United States, it's not because we won't let you in, but because your country won't allow you to leave and come to New York because we're such a hot spot. Um, this is your chance. It might, could be your chance to take the bar exam. California online. A lot of foreign trained attorneys take the California exam. This would be really nice. You don't have to leave and travel around the world to take the exam. So it, there's some real positives. I mean, the online exam was coming. It was it was down the road. We're obviously being forced into supercharging it. But it's also become exceedingly clear that the National Conference simply was not going to do a 200-question MBE online. And that's really what it came down to. And really, last night, finally, California blinked and said, OK, you're really not going to do a 200-question exam. And the NCBE said, nope, isn't happening. And California said, all right, we'll take your 100-question plan B then, and went off to their room and slammed the door. <laughs> I, I think that that's, that's a pretty clear indication that while online tests are coming, it's going to be a long, hard fight to get the full exam online. Yeah. And real quick, I just want, Mozzie had a question about the the Supreme Court letter about the first year law students examination and what does that mean for us? I mean, really, Mozzie, it means all we know is what they've said, which is they postponed it to November 2020. But that's, I mean, and that was a while back that they yeah. had said that. That's that's all we know. So I'm, I know it's really frustrating because they're really focusing on the main bar exam. Obviously, that's because they have upwards of seven thousand people who are taking that exam um, versus a very small amount who take the first year. And so their priority right now is just trying to get these people barred in the state of California and make sure that they can give an exam. So I'm so sorry. I know it's really frustrating. We'll update as, as they say anything, but as of right now, we just, that's all we can go off of is that they're thinking about the November one and we'll see, I, again, as Jackson said, talk to your law school, we'll ask them, but there, there's a chance. I mean, certainly I would plan on it being online, but we still haven't heard anything. November's a while off. It, I think they're just really focused right now on the, the main bar exam. So, yes. Okay. All right. Our final state change is Louisiana, which is a state exam. They canceled their July 27th in-person and online exam. So that's a lot of changes. We are definitely going to keep you guys updated with everything. Uh, we anticipate a lot more changes next week. I, I know it's frustrating. We are at... July 17th and the bar exam is supposed to happen in a couple weeks. And it's really frustrating that you know, things are just kind of falling like dominoes, but look on the bright side with these for sure. You have extra time to study and you don't have the health considerations and concerns. Um, you don't have to travel. Uh, you get to take it in a quiet environment where you will not have you know, some random person sitting next to you who has the world's loudest keyboard or <laughs> is just like coughing underneath their mask and you're like panicking thinking like am I gonna end up in the hospital because of this so definitely it's it's definitely I think it'll be okay that's kind of the underlying message keep studying and it'll be okay and then we've got one note about not a state change but the procedures came out for Illinois 
So we've got Illinois sent a letter to all of their applicants. They will be giving their, what they're calling seed assignments, which are really more location assignments where they're going to tell you what city and and location you're going to be in. They are going to give that out two to three weeks before the exam, uh, which is really unfortunate because it means you cannot book a hotel or make travel plans until up to two weeks before you need to take the exam. So yeah. You like the the little note, but there's plenty of hotels. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's really? unfortunate, but they did give, they have some different procedures, which sound uh, like good ideas. They're going to do staggered start and stop times. So you will get a specific time that you're supposed to re- report to your location. And they said they're holding people to it. So don't be like me. Who's like, I show up crazy early everywhere. If you do that, just wait in your car. Cause uh, they really don't want people congregating. So they're going to have people come at staggered times to check them in and then for them to leave. They are requiring masks the entire time. That's more in line with what we've been seeing. And I thought this was important. Um, They said no bandanas or neck gaiters, which are like where you kind of pull up the thing over your face. So that's definitely, if you're somebody who's felt that was more comfortable, I know my kids, my son really likes the neck gaiter thing more than a mask. That won't, that won't be allowed. So start practicing with, find a comfortable mask for yourself and start practicing with that. Yeah, the another interesting thing in Illinois was they said they're going to stay at 50 people per room. So they said 48 applicants and two proctors, but probably less than that even. I thought that was interesting to just sort of acknowledge that six feet away from each other and all the standard stuff you would expect. No congregating for lunch, those sorts of things. The other interesting piece to me in Illinois was the warning shot that they fired that said, we're going to try and give this test. What's the date for their exam? They're one of the September ones. Uh, they're a September date. But they said, if we can't give this test yeah. in person, we're not going to do an online exam. Yeah. Now, that was a pretty bold statement, I thought, for them mm-hmm. to make. We've seen Florida said, we're never going to give an online exam. Well, hello, August 19th. <laughs> so clearly examiners can change their minds. Things can happen. But I thought it was a pretty pretty interesting piece, didn't you, to, to put up there to say, it's, it's all or nothing. We're either going to do it this yeah. way or see in 2021. Right. And I'm wondering if they're just thinking the logistics for them of trying to change direction midstream. It has been hard, I think, for some states yeah. to do that. It's not like it's simple to put together an online exam. So yeah, so they have said it's this or if we can't do it, then see you in February 2021. So Um, Again, you should be studying if you're taking Illinois. Now, the Illinois exam in September will be a UBE test. So if you are, if you've got a seat for that exam, hold on to it. That's a valuable commodity right now. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't completely surprise me if they canceled that test. And it wouldn't surprise me entirely if they didn't end up figuring out a way to go online. I mean, I, I just think the pressure to give a test is so great. We'll see what New York does. If New York bends to that pressure. I think it's going to be tough for a state like Illinois to say, no, we're not going to do it. It would just seem out of touch. The Illinois procedures, for those of you that are interested in things like that, ran 13 pages long. (laughs) So get used to it. I mean, I think this is our new normal. You're just going to get these long, long lists of things you have to do to be prepared. And you are responsible for 13 pages of that stuff. It's pretty clear to me that if you violate their rules, you're done. So Don't rely on other people to tell you what it is and make sure you've done it and taken the time and read it. I know a lot of you feel pressed and you there's too much to read and too much to do, but really I think it's critical that you be on top of that. All right. So we've got some student questions about coronavirus changes. With regard to the September Texas bar exam, since the July exam has been canceled, which of the following options are good? If I take the in-person exam in September, it's two days with only six Texas essay questions. But if I take the online exam in October, I have to do 12 essay questions. So, so many questions and uncertainties are keeping things very unsettled. Yeah, we, we can't tell you what to do. I, I think I could you and I have talked about this in a couple of different episodes and, and Q and A's. I think personally, I would prefer to have six essays uh, and 12. That's just me. But I, I think it depends on where your comfort level lies, right? If for health reasons, it's better for you to do an online exam, do an online exam. If you would be more comfortable taking the test at home rather than going someplace, 
do that. I think the examiners are going to endeavor to make the test fair in both situations. We don't know how they're going to score it, frankly. And again, it's <clears throat> they already changed the, the, the methodology for the in-person exam, the weighting of the exam in September. I don't know how they're going to weight the exam online. And remember, Texas is going to the UBE. So you've got that coming in 2021 as well. Unfortunately, there's just no one size fits all answer that I can think of. But am I missing anything there? No, I think that's right. All right. The California State Bar on its website still speaks about an afternoon session on both days. How will we have an afternoon session when the MBE is shortened? You want to deal with that? Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, the logistics of doing it online tend to take longer than the logistics of doing it in person. And so we'll, you'll still need the two days because most likely what will happen, we're not sure yet again, but based on what we've seen for other things is they would probably have to split the essays into a morning and an afternoon session, which would then be like one of those would be shorter, a shorter session. And then they'd have the performance test in one session and the hundred questions of the MBEs for the, for the alternate section. So um, we don't anticipate you doing five hour long essays, like all at once and then doing a performance test in the afternoon. That would just be too long. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things we did see with the California baby bar was that it took a lot longer to, to administer than anybody expected. So yeah, yeah I think it was a long gonna, day for them. Yeah, we're going to discover that. I mean, October 5th and 6th, I think one jurisdiction already added the 7th because they just said you can't do it in two days. I think right. they may be the wisest of all. But okay. yeah. um, all right. The California Supreme Court's letter is clear. There will be no problem with slow connections. But what would happen in the case of no connection, like a blackout? I think you're done. I think a blackout would, would wipe you out. So yeah, for the baby bar, they had like a window where you could get back online. I'm like a time uh, limit. And I, I'm so sorry. I'm blanking on exactly how long it was, but it's not that long. So it's long enough that you could do it. If you're like, ah, my internet just went funky. You could get back on, but not long enough that if you lost power, you could log back in and extend your time. Yeah, I no. mean, it starts when it starts and it finishes yes. when it finishes. So I, I think it's got to be short enough that they, they can protect against cheating, right? Like, oh, yeah. click, whoa, too bad. My internet went off. Oh, yeah. what do I do? You know, on right. this question, they're not going to make that yeah. possible for you. And if they have any reason to think that suddenly your answer got a whole lot better during, after that break, you're subject to, I think, a lot more scrutiny. So I know there are people that are already trying to game this out. None of our students, but I know there are people out there that are going to try and game this out. Don't do it. Yeah. The examiners are going to be very, very skeptical of anything that looks out of the, the normal so yeah. while there's, they're trying to be helpful for people that may have a bad internet connection, it's not something you should plan on trying to, to take advantage of. And frankly, if you're in a place with bad internet, go find a place with good yeah. internet for this test. You have enough time, go scout it out, find someplace and do that. Yeah. Please don't take the test at Starbucks is really my point. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need to upgrade your internet just for like a month, like pay for an extra month of better internet. Uh, it seems to me like it's worth it. And then you could just bring your plan back down to what you had before. Yeah, cheaper um, than flying to Sacramento. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot less than a hotel room and, and a flight. So, okay. So the passing score in California was lowered, but there was no answer on its expected effect on improving the pass rates. Is it expected to meet national norms or will we still have lower passing rates? You'll still have lower passing rates. That, that score of uh, 278 uh, again, to put it in comparison, 266 in New York, 272 in Florida, 270 in Georgia, 270 in Texas. I mean, it's it's a way, way high number. Better than it was, a 10-point drop. I'll take 10 points every day of the week. Yeah. But California is still going to have the worst pass rates in America, in my view. Yeah. All right. In New York, how will their decision to cancel the September exam affect the 2021 exams? Yeah, well, we talked about that. I think it's going to have a bubble effect if they really do cancel it. That's why I don't think they'll cancel. I think when cooler heads prevail, after they get past the initial shock of what they've just done, they're going to say, wait a minute, if we couldn't handle it right now, how do we expect to handle all of that overflow plus the people that were on a diploma waiver? It, it, it raises this question that I've seen uh, online, uh, lots of op-eds, lots of editorials, lots of People saying, get rid of the bar exam. It doesn't count. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. You know, it's fascinating discussion, but totally based in fantasy, not reality. 
there will be bar exams. You will not get into the bar, generally speaking, forever and ever without a bar exam. It's just not going to happen. And so for New York or any other jurisdiction, if they're just pushing this back, if they're pushing it down the road, they are still going to have a reckoning that will come. And so that reckoning is going to be even worse, the backup in 2021. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have tests in February and March and April of 2021, because we, we're not any different. Apparently, we're not capable of figuring out how to put on a mask. And so we're not really any different about what we're doing right now. And that makes me very skeptical that we're going to be better off at that point. I just want to finish with a couple of quick comments. First, uh, we've got the July 28th exam about 10 days out or so. Very few of you are taking that exam now. I mean, as, as state after state pulls out, this is clearly changing things. Keep a weather eye out over the next few days. I think we will still see more states bailing on the July 28th exam, particularly in COVID hotspots. I also think we'll see some of those September 9th exam jurisdictions make the same decision like we saw uh, this afternoon in Vermont. I think with California making the switch, it's going to, to change the, the dynamics nationally, and we're going to see more and more states wanting to go into that October 5th and 6th date. So keep an eye out for that. But if you don't get anything else out of what Megan and I said today, this is the takeaway. You must keep studying. Do not stop studying. Don't change what you're doing. Just keep working. You are well prepared and well prepped for what these tests are going to be. Very little in this process has surprised us. We were calling this shot six months ago. So I think that to the extent it feels unsettling to you, it's normal and natural, but it's really not as crazy as it sounds. We have set everything up for you to work regardless of the test date or the way it's being done. And I really want to encourage you to, to hang in there. And then finally, I, I really want to, to let you know that this webinar that we're doing on the 25th is a game changer. If you are feeling stressed, if you are feeling insecure, if you are feeling like you can't do it, if you're feeling like the whole system doesn't work for you of the bar, please join me. I have created this webinar with Paul's help to be specifically focused on that. And I am absolutely convinced that this will be, uh, those of you that have been in boot camp, I know Megan, you, you've been at boot camp in, in June and what we're able to do with mindset is huge there. We've tried to replicate that and compress it to 90 minutes of the best stuff. And I really encourage people to take advantage of that. So please sign up and uh, then we'll see you on that webinar. And then you and I, are, are, are you back with us next week? Or are you out next week? I should be here. Yes, next week I am here. Okay. okay. Yeah. So next week, a few days before the July exam, which we would have thought was a big deal, but now right. maybe not so much. We will all be back and we'll we'll deal with everything that comes up. I'm sure there will be more stuff. If anything significant happens during the week, we will let and we'll do a Facebook Live. And thank you all for hanging in there with us today. Thanks, yeah. Megan. And we will see you all next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, wear your mask. Yeah. <laughs> That's our episode for this week. As you can see, there was a lot going on and we expect that there will continue to be changes uh, throughout the next uh, few days and weeks. If you are taking the bar exam on July 28th and 29th, we wanna wish you good luck. You're now within about 10 days or so from the time that this episode is released and uh, encourage you to keep your head down, keep studying and stay healthy. For all the rest of you taking exams in September or August or uh, October now, uh, good luck to you. And of course, we'll keep our eye on what happens in New York to see uh, what they decide to do in early August, but would encourage all of you, as we said, to keep studying there as well. And if you're really confused and frustrated by this uh, set of circumstances, I do want to remind you again of our free training webinar, Now is the Best Time to Take the Bar Exam. We're going to look at all of the changes right up to that minute. We'll update you on everything that's going on, tell you our strategy for dealing with it, and then answer your questions in a live Q&A. Again, you can register by going into the show notes or going to celebrationbarnew.com slash now. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week along the extra mile. Thanks for listening and watching the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers at celebrationbarreview.com.